and welcome to this knowledge clip on one of the most recent decisions rendered by the International Court of Justice relating to international environmental law. This decision combined two separate proceedings which were brought before the court by uh, Costa Rica and Nicaragua respectively. The facts that gave rise to these cases were as follows. In October 2010, Nicaragua started a dredging program in the San Juan River and other works in the northern part of East La Potillos. Costa Rica objected to these activities and brought Nicaragua before the court in November 2010, alleging, among others, violation of international environmental law. Costa Rica, for its part, in December 2010, started to construct a road um, in its territory along part of its border with Nicaragua. Nicaragua also objected to the construction of the road and brought Costa Rica before the court in December 2011. As mentioned, the court combined these two cases and dealt with them both in a judgment which it rendered in 2015. For the purposes of the knowledge clip today, I will only look at the first case, Costa Rica versus Nicaragua. In particular, we will look at how the court interpreted and applied important obligations of environmental law to the case before it. So, as I said, Costa Rica alleged that Nicaragua had violated its obligations under international environmental law, including both procedural obligations and substantive obligations. The procedural obligations included the obligation to conduct environmental impact assessment and the obligation to uh, notify and consult with Costa Rica. The substantive obligation included the obligation to prevent transboundary harm. We will now look at these uh, obligations in more detail. First, the obligation to conduct environmental impact assessment. Costa Rica alleged that Nicaragua had failed to conduct an environmental impact assessment in advance of the dredging program on uh, the impact of the dredging program on its uh, uh, land, its uh, river, and its wetlands. Nicaragua, for its part, argued that in 2006, it had already conducted an environmental impact assessment study, and the findings of the study showed that there was no risk of a, a significant transboundary harm from the dredging program, and in fact, the dredging program could potentially be uh, beneficial for Costa Rica. The court, uh, in response, uh, stated that first, it confirmed that the obligation to conduct environmental impact assessment was an obligation under customary international law. This was not the first time that the court made such, uh, such an observation. In 2010, in the Pop Mills case uh, between uh, Argentina and Uruguay, the court already confirmed the customary nature of the obligation to conduct uh, international uh, uh, environmental impact assessment. And so there was no dispute that this obligation was applicable to the case before it now. The court further observed that the obligation to conduct environmental impact assessment generally applied to activities which could um, cause adverse significant harm in the transboundary context. But the content of the uh, obligation had to be determined uh, in light of the specific circumstances of each case. More importantly, the court in this case made a uh, connection between the obligation to conduct environmental impact assessment with the other two obligations that Nicaragua invoked. First, it uh, established a connection between the obligation to conduct environmental impact assessment and the obligation to prevent transboundary harm in the sense that the obligation to conduct environmental impact assessment is part of the obligation to prevent transboundary harm. And so if a state wants to fulfill its obligation to prevent transboundary harm, it has the obligation to conduct environmental impact assessment. The court also established a connection between uh, the obligation to conduct environmental impact assessment and the obligation to notify and consult. Uh, it said that if environmental impact assessment confirms that there is a risk of significant transboundary harm, then the state that is planning to undertake the activity has the obligation to notify and consult with the state that is potentially affected by such activity.
However, in this case, the court found that in the 2006 environmental impact assessment study that Nicaragua conducted, um, it showed that there was no risk of uh, significant transboundary harm uh, on the environment of uh, Costa Rica. This 2006 study was later confirmed by the experts of both parties. And therefore, the court concluded that the uh, dredging program did not give rise to significant transboundary harm. And in light of the absence of uh, significant transboundary harm, the court concluded that Nicaragua did not have an obligation to conduct environmental impact assessment. Moving on to the obligation to notify and consult. Um, Costa Rica alleged that this obligation existed under both customary international law and under treaty law. In particular, Article uh, 3, Paragraph 2, and Article 5 of the Ramsar Convention, as well as Article 13G and Article 33 of the Convention on the Conservation of Biodiversity and Protection of Priority Wilderness in Central America all provide for this obligation. Nicaragua said that none of these obligations were applicable to the case before it, and that in any event, because um, the court had already found that there was no risk of uh, significant transboundary harm, Nicaragua did not have an obligation to uh, notify and consult with Costa Rica. The court again agreed with uh, Nicaragua in this case, and it found that because uh, it has established that there was no risk of um, significant transboundary harm because uh, Nicaragua did not have the obligation to conduct environmental impact assessment, did not have the obligation to consult with uh, uh, Costa Rica or to notify Costa Rica. The court also said that the obligations under the Ramsar Convention or the Convention uh, relating specifically to Central America were simply not applicable to the facts of the case before it. And therefore, it concluded that Nicaragua did not violate the obligation to notify or consult with Costa Rica under international environmental law. Finally, with regards to the obligation to prevent transboundary harm, uh, Costa Rica alleged that the dredging program conducted by Nicaragua caused harm to the Colorado River. Uh, it caused harm to its territory on the right bank of the river as well as um, harm to its wetlands. Uh, Nicaragua refuted all of these uh, allegations. Um, the court found that Indeed, under international uh, customary international law, there was an obligation to prevent uh, uh, transboundary harm. Uh, all states under uh, customary international law had an obligation to use all means at its disposal to prevent activities that take place in its territory or in area under its jurisdiction to cause environmental harm to the territory of another state. This is essentially the content of the principle of prevention under international environmental law. However, in this case, the court found that uh, Costa Rica did not produce uh, convincing evidence to show that it uh, actually suffered harm from the dredging program. It didn't provide any evidence to show that the sediment um, from the dredging uh, was deposited on the right bank of its river, and it didn't show that there was harm caused to its wetlands as well as to the flow of the Colorado River. Nicaragua, in fact, argued that the dredging, the diversion of the Colorado River uh, affected less than 2% of the waters flowing into the Colorado River. And therefore, the court concluded that um, even if uh, Nicaragua had um, shown that there was a reduction in the flow of the waters, it couldn't prove that there was a causal link between this reduction and the dredging program conducted by Nicaragua. In conclusion, the court found that Nicaragua did not violate the obligation to uh, prevent transboundary harm in light of the lack of evidence that uh, Costa Rica could produce. Thank you very much for your attention.